Hi, everybody. Welcome back to Jenkins Boatworks. I am Chuck Jenkins, and in this episode, uh, we're going to continue to work on the Freedom 17 canoe, which is this strip-built canoe we've been working on. Um, many of you uh, are on some of the Facebook groups, the CLC boats, and Cedar Strip and Kayak Building and Wooden Boat Forum and uh, there's a number of, uh, uh, I'm building a boat, there's a number of different groups uh, on Facebook that I have some regular interaction with and uh, it's, it's interesting because you, you meet people online and some people you kind of connect with uh, and so there's kind of a, a brotherhood uh, within the boat building community. And uh, so, anyway, one, one of my friends in particular is just starting out on his first build, and I thought, uh, with, with some of the discussions we've had, uh, it occurred to me that, you know, you're going to gain knowledge just in doing it. Uh, this boat is my second, well, it's actually my third strip construction. I did a canoe, but then, uh, if you've been following me for any length of time, you know that the the 16-foot uh, Haven, 12 and a half, the sailboat we worked on for four years, it was strip construction. Slightly, slightly different because we cold molded it, but uh, a, lot of, a lot of similar uh, uh, skills went into that. And now, I have to say, just the way this boat's coming out, uh, there, there's nothing like having some experience. But I also know that uh, if you want to learn, certainly the internet and especially YouTube is a wonderful place to go. And so I thought I'd share some ideas just about tools that I use. And we'll actually see later in the video uh, these tools in action uh, as we fit this, this strip that's still taped up here. Uh, this was one of the first strips that we've now put on where I was able to get away with a 16-foot board and didn't have to scarf it. It also was the first one where I had to have it exactly right as far as its length by the time I got done with it because I had to make a cut at the bow and I had to make a cut at the stern to fit it in to the uh, other existing strip from the other side. So uh, there's, there's some detail in this video about that as I show some of the tools that I'm using. But I wanted to just take a couple of minutes and uh, talk about some of the tools that I do use. Now, I said this up front when we first started this project and I haven't changed my mind. I don't do Beaton Cove. So some of this might not apply if you do use Beaton Cove. Uh, some of it, of course, will. Uh, also, I'm going stapleless on this. And so the tools that I use enable me to be able to get these strips to lay down next to each other and on the molds in such a fashion that I can get away without using the staples. Uh, it's slower, you have to wait for each strip to dry, uh, but I'm sure liking the way it's coming out. So let's get to the tools. Um, my wife got me this little cart, and this really has come in quite handy. The first time I used the strong back, I had all kinds of tools and stuff sitting in under here. And when you're on your first couple, three strips, that's okay. But once you start getting up over your chine and, and start really getting some, some strips on there, it gets more and more difficult to reach down under here, find something, or be able to see it without having to hunt for it. So I really have liked this little cart. And um, so anyway, it allows me to pretty much keep all the tools that I'm using. So you can see I've got these larger size clamps and some of these, the metal spring clamps are, are tighter. They're harder. The plastic ones, uh, not quite so much, but each has their place. So I, I use them sometimes interchangeably and sometimes just depends on, on the particular part of the strip I'm trying to hold. So these are very important. I probably have uh, well, probably 30 of these larger ones. And I've got a bunch of little ones too like this. So they're basic, well that's missing its deal. 
They're, they're basically the same same thing. They're just smaller. And, and these are can be handy when you get into a place where you're up at the top of the mold and the strip's so close to it that, that you don't you just barely have a little bit of room to, to put a clamp in. So those are nice. I have some of these other clamps, like these big bar clamps. This here is a 24 inch, and I've used this a couple of times just recently trying to get the end of the strip to lay down fair up near the end and on the on the uh, stem. Um, and I've got some other, several other clamps that are assorted kind of like this. Um, we have Bernie Sander here is my belt sander, and I used this a lot when I was um, uh, scarfing strips. I made a little jig and I, I was able to just get them all sanded down to where they fit together very nicely. Um, he actually probably needs to go back into the regular workbench. Now, as far as cutting tools, um, I've thought for some time to buy a really nice Japanese pull saw. This is a sort of American version and it's a good saw. It's got smaller teeth on this side, which is what I primarily use. This one, I haven't had much luck cutting anything with that side. But uh, a, a nice pull saw is a good thing to have. Um, I can't say enough good things about this little Stanley Sureform plane. It's like a cheese grater on the bottom. And uh, if you need to angle off part of a strip or just trim something up, it's real sharp. You can replace these and you can buy the replacement blades. It's just got a little screw in the back. And so you, you can uh, buy replacements. Quite honestly, I'm probably due for one. Love this thing. Um, also got just a regular block plane. Um, and uh, th this, is, this is nice too, especially if I need to thin down a strip just a little bit on the end. Uh, you can get some nice smooth cuts with this. I don't use it a ton, but it's nice to have. Um, the, the Robo Bevel, and this is what I got from Nick at, at Guillemot Kayaks, and I just keep plugging this dude because I love it, and I'm not getting anything for plugging it. Uh, I, I met Nick uh, two years ago at the Wooden Boat Show in Mystic, Connecticut. Nice guy. Um, and so I had bought this from him, and I hadn't had the opportunity to use it. The key to this, though, is the, is the Maritas Plane. And this dude's a quarter inch on the blade and it fits right in here and you can do it on either side. You can also use it by itself. Uh, and if you get in some tight spots, it's just really handy. It's got adjustments where you can, you know, make the blade come in deeper and you tighten it here and uh, it's just really a, a handy little tool. Um, I, I bought this online and I still have the box. I say it's, it's Veritas, Veritas miniature plane. And I can't remember how much I paid for it. I'm, I'm thinking it was $30 maybe. Don't hold me to that. I can't remember. Um, I keep, um, I just recently made this uh, uh, mallet and I had a piece of white oak out of that tree I cut down when I was building the haven. And uh, so I just had this scrap piece and it was kind of curved. I just took it on the bandsaw and I just kind of started cutting it into what I thought would be kind of a mallet shape. And after I got to looking at it, after I used it for a little bit, I'm like, that's a whale mallet. <laughs> it's a whale mallet. It's great. So I, if, if you, you need this because you're going to have opportunities where you're going to need to be using a chisel. And I got these at Harbor Freight. They were in a set of five and, and they weren't terribly expensive and they're not super good ones, but they're good enough for what I'm doing. And you, if you keep them sharp, you're fine. This is a, a, a half inch one and I have used, where I don't see it here. Yeah, here I've used the, the quarter inch one uh, repeatedly. If you've got a tight space where you got to get in, either to trim off an edge of a, of a strip or to uh, fair down part of the stem. Uh, I've, I've used this a lot with my whale mallet. Um, got these little cleats, little plywood cleats. You just make these. Now this one's got a little curve on it. 
to where you might be able to fit it over a curved part of a couple of, and they're just different odd shapes. Some are bigger, that one's really too big. Uh, some have got a longer slot in them. I probably got 20 of these or so. Um, some of them are smaller, they fit in tight spaces. I may even cut one of these off to, once I get way up into the, where the strips are starting to run into each other. Um, bungee cord, I've used bungee cord to come over the ends to try to hold down a strip that I want to kind of get flattened down. Uh, tape, I got a bunch of tape. I'm not really liking this masking tape very much. It has a tendency to tear out this painter's tape. This is clean release. I really like this one. Uh, this one was made by duct tape, but it's a clean release painter's tape. And I'm, I'm running out of it. It's my second roll. I just bought another one um, just the other night. Um, Exacto knife. You, the, you pretty much got to have one of these. Um, and like I said, in some of the video, you'll see me um, using these various different tools and see how, how it applies. And I didn't have all these tools when I built my first canoe. Um, I had a little tiny pen knife that was made by Exacto that had a sharp little blade on it. I used that exclusively for cu cutting my bevels to get my strips to match up. I didn't have the, didn't have the luxury of having the robo bevel. Um, I can't tell you how much time this thing has saved me. Paper towels, every time I put the glue on, I'm trying to wipe up a mess here or there. I'm using the Tight Bond 3 glue for gluing the strips together. You can just get this at, at, at Lowe's or Home Depot or your Ace Hardware or whatever. Most of these clamps you can find at, at you know, a regular uh, home supply store. Well, I guess that's about it. Loving my little cart, keep all my stuff together. And uh, so anyway, we'll go ahead and uh, show some of the rest of the video we did the other night of, of putting this strip down and how we use some of these tools. So anyway, I'm glad you're here. If you haven't subscribed yet, please do or consider it. So some of the tools that we use when we're trying to get strips cut and, and uh, fitted uh, would include the robo bevel, of course. And we use this to primarily uh, get an edge on here that's 90 degrees to the frame. So when you run this thing along the, so it's got a little plane in there, a little mini Veritas plane. It's a quarter inch shoulder plane meaning that the blade goes all the way across. And so if your strips are a quarter inch, uh, you, you can just trim them right off. And so the idea is this whole deal lays down on there, gives you a 90 degree angle, and it changes depending on what frame you're on. So basically, we're cutting off the inside edge of this, mostly, so that the strip then will lay fair against not only the previous strip, but also the mold. <coughs> now, you saw me run into trouble when I got up to here, because I just don't have enough room to maneuver it. So what I've been doing, it's just taking the plane out. And of course you can put it on either side of this depending on which way you're going when you're using it with this, with the robo bevel. But this little plane, I actually bought this separately uh, from Veritas. Um, I'll show you the box here in a little bit. And uh, so you can just get right on there, lay it on there. And see now I'm right up against that frame and I can just push that right along there. and get my bevel. And where I really want to do it is up in here because I can't get next to the, to the stem. It's gonna be really cool there. So I'm gonna come up here. And just see how, how, what a tight, 
tight area you can get to with that. Now, once I get to here, I can look in here and I can see that that bevel didn't make it all the way up there because the stem started pushing it out of the way. So now I'm just using a utility knife. This is a Stanley one. Buy new blades. I bought new blades and they're reversible. You can flip them around if they start getting dull. But you can take this and carefully go in there and trim that inside edge like that. You gotta be careful you don't catch some grain and rip out a big piece. So just take off little bits at a time. And if you see yourself starting to grab onto too much, stop. I know that sounds stupid, but stop. And we want a nice straight line in there. Now I cut that off and it's stuck in there. I gotta get it out of there. Okay, I'm gonna have to get a screwdriver or something. Okay, now I already had cut this one, this end of this strip. And basically what I did at first is I just held it up on here and I you can maybe see this pencil mark here. And then I put another pencil mark on the end of the strip here. And then I just connected the dots and drew a line. Now I actually cut this on the bandsaw because it was a pretty long, uh, long cut, but you can use your, your pull saw and I have a imitation Japanese made by, by Irwin. Uh, it's got a thick teeth and small teeth. I usually use the small teeth whenever I use this saw. And so you could get on there and just cut your, cut your strip. Now, having done that, I test fitted this deal, and it's just almost going right in there, but I'm not quite happy with it. It's not coming all the way up to the end here, and I got just a little bit of a hump right there. So I want to be really cool about this. I also can tell that, um, oh, I got that piece out. Look at that. Um, I can also tell that there's still an inside edge there that's causing me it wants to lay down, but it's causing this gap in here. So we want to trim off either the inside edge of that or the inside edge here. So in order to do that, I'm going to take this sure form, Stanley sure form plane. It's like a cheese grater on the bottom. This thing's wonderful. Let's take that and run that along the bottom of there on that, on that inside edge. Try to get it about 45 degrees. And so since I can't reach in real easily and do it on, on the strip that's existing, I do it on the one that's going in there. I need to pin this up here a minute. All right. Now I'm too short. I got those cleats up there holding it to where it's not going to jump all around. Plus now I can make my bend coming in here like this so that I get a real true idea what this angle is going to be coming in here. So, now, when I go and put that in there, see that's fitting in there way better because we trimmed off that inside edge of that. That's going to lay in there just good. Now, I still got just a little gap right there that I'm not super happy about, but I think it's because it's, the canoe's kind of bending down just a little bit. And it could be because of this scarf joint. I think I might be just a little bit thick on this existing strip. Let's pull this out of there and see if we can use the, this little Veritas plane and see if we can trim that off just a little bit. Oh, that already looks better. I think I can still take just a little bit off of the inside edge, either there or there. Let's do it right there. Still just a little wonky. 
let's try to take off a little bit here. You can get to a point where you take off too much and at a point you just gotta go, okay, that's good enough. And to have just a little tiny seam like that's not the end of the world, because uh, that'll fill with epoxy. But there's also something quite satisfying about getting it right. You can see when you've got little humps in here. Now see, that's, that's way better. I can live with that. I think by the time I, you know, we may take just a hair off of, off of this. That's good. That's how you do it. But anyway, a variety of cutting tools is, is, is a big help. And that's, that's my biggest point. Okay, so this is the other end of the same strip. And now we need to try to get it to fit into here. This will be the last one that's on the stem, on the stern. So I've got the strip clamped down and clamped down tight and that front part that we cut is, is fitted in tight as well. So I know that I don't need to be either long or short on this, but I am gonna cut it long, just maybe a quarter, eighth to a quarter of an inch. So what I'm gonna do is I got the strip laying right up here and I can see where this point is right there. And I'm gonna make a mark on my strip, just back just a hair from it. Then up here, where I need for that strip to fit in, I'm gonna make another mark right there. And that's maybe a little too far out. Let's go right there. Then we're gonna connect the dots. And I just use a scrap piece of wood. Mark it like that. And when you're doing this, you can see if it lines up with the strip, right? like that all right so I'm gonna just use my pull saw and and cut this I'm gonna put something under it while I saw it because I don't want to saw the canoe <laughs> now getting started is the trick just want to go nice and easy and stay right on your line I don't have the grain messing me up too bad. It didn't throw me off. I have taken the X-Acto knife and cut a, a score mark in there to where then the saw will stay, stay right where I want it, but I didn't have to do it this time. Get that sawdust out of the way, the saw will fit in there easier. I know we're only cutting a quarter inch. Now, I'm actually gonna put a little bit of an angle on this because I know it's gonna take a little bit of an angle anyway. And that just is something you get by feel. You could just cut it straight up and down. And then plane it. I'm gonna hold on to this back end of this. I don't want it to rip because this thing's under some stress because the strip's bent. Now, with any luck, that'll just go right in there. Okay, I cut it long, and I knew I cut it long, but yeah, look at that. We're not gonna take much at all, and that's just gonna go right in there. Okay, now, on this one, the stem may be just a little bit proud here, and I'm gonna take a regular 
block plane and clean off the underside of this. I'm going to take this block plane and just kind of shave off that underside of that. Like that. You don't want to thin it out too much, but you want it to sit in there too. Part of the reason it's struggling is because it's still too long. But we're real close. Now see, well, that's what I was talking about, about having that angle on there. It needs to be coming in like that to mate up with that one. So I didn't cut quite enough off of, I didn't cut it at quite enough of an angle, but we can fix that too. In this case, I'm gonna use the sure form. And give myself a bit of an angle on there. And I'm actually gonna take off a bit of that end while I do that. That's part of why I cut it long. Okay. That's still humped up a little bit, and I think it's because of the form. I may take this tape off of here and trim this form down just a little bit. I don't wanna thin this out too much, but let's take a little bit more off the bottom of it. Okay, now it's just too long, but it's fitting right in there. You play with it until you get I'm still having a hard time getting this thing laid down. It's popped up on the edge there, and I think part of the problem is that I've got too much on the stem right there. There's a sharp little point. So I'm going to take this little quarter-inch chisel, and I'm just going to carve that off of there just a hair. Almost. I still think I'm hanging up on this. I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have to trim down the form. It's really close, so we're almost there. So I'm actually I took the tape off of here, and I'm actually just chiseling this form down just a little bit. And you can see that my stems here, um, and it was actually slightly lower than this. It was right when we set it up, but I did some, some trimming on it and uh, it got to be just a teeny bit lower than the mold. And this mold was really pointy at the top and I kind of wondered when I cut it out if that was gonna be, gonna be right, but there's no way to know until you start putting the strips on there. So sometimes you just gotta make these little adjustments. And I'd rather do some of this than thin the strip down too much. See, that's fitting in there much better, much better. I can almost live with that. Keep up just a little bit of that. trick here is don't forget to put tape back on there so you do not want to glue this strip to the mold. How about that? I'm good with that. Maybe just a hair more off the underside of this. Boom. Good with that. I really want to make sure I got that cleaned out of there because if, if I leave any in there, when I put that next strip in, 
next to it right here. I'm going to have a devil of a time if that's sticking up, and it is. So I'm going to clean that on out too. It's got to take your time with this. It's actually really quite satisfying. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.